My name is Jennifer Andrew Grossman, and I am going to draw my life. I was born in New Delhi, India. My parents eloped because of religious differences. My mom's family was Catholic from Louisiana and wanted her to get married in the church. Dad was from New York and Jewish, and he didn't want to do that. So he said, leave it all behind. And she did. They joined the Peace Corps and went to India. They took me all over the country. I got to ride on elephants. I wore bells on my feet. I had a little boyfriend named Omar, and I learned to speak Hindi. It was awesome. But then my mother got sick. Her heart wasn't beating properly, and she had to go to the hospital, and they sent me back to the United States. I cried on the plane all the way to New York. But then I fell in love with my grandmother, who took great care of me. She was a painter, a sculptor, a designer, and she taught me how to embrace beauty and love. Later, my parents came back and we moved to Massachusetts. My dad was a doctor, my mom was a social worker. My brother and sister, Edward and Jessica, were born. Mom was a bit of a feminist and cut my hair and tried to get me to wear things like overalls and flannel shirts. But I wanted to grow my hair super long and wear sequins and be a disco queen. She said, if you do that, people will objectify you. That's when I discovered I was an objectivist. Okay, just kidding. I hated school. I was essentially from a different country and I felt really different. I was kind of a nerd on the inside, but I also liked to wear sequins and ballet costumes to school. So I thought this was normal. The other kids, not so much. They put me on trial for being stuck up. This meant, apparently, thinking very highly of yourself, which I actually did. The sentence was social exile. No one was allowed to look at me or speak to me. They called it the IHJ Club. The ringleader was a girl named Darlene who would bully me and push me around. So one day I asked her, what do I need to do to have you leave me alone? Her answer, kill yourself. N not an option. I loved my life, and I certainly wasn't going to sacrifice it for someone who hated me. So it was then that I started to think that not only was it impossible to try and make other people like you, but it was really wrong to rely on other people to feel good about yourself. So I gave up on being popular and focused instead on being smart. I decided I was going to focus on getting the best grades and try to get into the best school. So when I got into Harvard, I said, yeah, it was worth it. I was curious about other countries and about the way the world worked. So I decided to study government. After school, I moved to the government town, Washington, DC. And then I got a job at the White House. So I started researching and then writing speeches for the President of the United States. It was incredible. I had many great mentors and teachers, but while I was at the Cato Institute, I discovered the greatest teacher of all. Ayn Rand was an incredible woman, a courageous refugee from Russia who stood up to communism and fascism and braved all kinds of criticism to share her vision for a better, more peaceful world. She wrote about strong women like Dagny in Atlas Shrugged and Kira in We the Living and Dominique in The Fountainhead. So I changed my license plate to Ayn Rand and set out for Malibu, California for a new life and a new job. I bought a house. I learned to surf. I started a nutrition institute. Life was good. And then my house burned down. All my grandmother's paintings, all my books, all my photos, all my clothes. I lost everything I had ever owned. But what I did have was my mind and the philosophical resources I'd learned from Ayn Rand. 
I also thought about how she came to this country with nothing, how she came to LA with nothing. And look what she created. So I picked myself up and I started to rebuild. I built the kind of house that I thought Howard Rourke might build. Now I share my house, not through force, as under socialism, but through voluntary association. I've hosted Airbnb guests from all over the country and all over the world, and I always tell them about Ayn Rand and what I've learned. No wonder I've had to buy Atlas Shrugged in five languages. So, when David Kelly, the great philosopher, asked me if I would help him take Ayn Rand's message to a new audience, what other answer could I give? But yes, Ayn Rand helped me be stronger, freer, fiercer, clearer. Her books and her ideas helped me live my fullest life. My way to help other people is to teach them about these ideas. I believe we all have an atlas inside of us. Find yours at the Atlas Society.